Hello, hello, and welcome to another video on my channel. My name is Hannah McNeely. If I'm not speaking as exuberantly or at the same volume that I normally do, it's just because baby is sleeping. <laughs> Let's get into this video about three things I never say to my baby. And keep in mind, I have one child, so I know one baby personality, essentially, for parenting. And I'm not an expert. <laughs> I'm not a parenting expert. This is just sort of what I've learned and how we foster or um, a more positive parenting um, approach um, because I, I know that a lot of people are sort of intrigued by the positive parenting mindset or method I don't know if that's the right word, or the, the gentle parenting approach. And um, yeah, this is what I've learned and I feel pretty convicted about it actually. And they were mind blowing things to me when I learned them several years ago and I'm now implementing them in my own house. And yes, you can still totally start implementing positive parenting at such a young age, my baby is a little over one, and there's just a different vibe when it comes to positive parenting. I highly recommend Rebecca Ean's book, I think it's called Positive Parenting. Um, such a good book, and it's funny, I was listening to it because I really like audiobooks. I can listen on my stroller walks, and I realized, you know, I'm halfway through the book, and most of the advice, the information is about working on yourself, and it's pretty fascinating because I think that we forget that so much of parenting is just working on who we are um, to promote a you know a certain childhood that we desire for our own kids and if we can't you know discipline ourselves how can we discipline children not that babies at my age really need like discipline but you know what I'm saying okay let's get into it thing number one that I never say to my baby is you're fine or you're okay what I mean is it is often our instinct, and I used to do this all the time, is like we just want to keep kids from crying. We just think like, oh, crying is bad, and so we need to stop them from crying, and so we need to tell them that they're fine, we need to distract them, we need to make them laugh. As humans, we need to be allowed to experience all emotions, and all emotions are fine, they're okay. We're not just trying to be happy, happy all the time. I just don't think it's a very good message for children. So generally, this is the scenario. A kid falls, a kid bumps his head, a kid you know, slips or something happens, they're crying, for, or mommy leaves, and the baby is crying and we want to say, oh, you're fine, you're fine, because we see what happened. Maybe it was, maybe it was a big fault, maybe it was a small fault, we just want, to, want them to stop crying. Imagine if you were in their shoes, because babies are still humans. You know, babies are people now. It's not like babies are just this weird creature and later they're people. Babies are people, just like we're people. So we experience things in similar ways. But imagine if something happened to you and you started crying and you turn to your friend or you turn to your partner or your mom or dad and they just want you to stop crying and they just go, stop crying, you're fine. I can see that you're fine, so you're fine. Like, what a thing to be told. No one wants to be told that. What we would rather someone do is let us express ourselves and to be supported through our emotion. And babies need the same thing, even babies as young as mine. So when I first heard this concept, it was so, so mind-blowing to me. I just never thought about it that way, that like, oh, I shouldn't just like tell my baby he's fine when he actually just needs to, needs to be supported through those emotions. Equally, if my baby sort of, you know, stumbles, trips, falls, whatever it is, and it truly is very minor and he actually is fine, he didn't really hurt himself, I still don't say you're fine and here's why. Are you ever sort of going through your day and you have all this emotional buildup and something's going on, something tangential, something is bothering you and then you still haven't cried yet about it, but then some, the tiniest thing happens and it just triggers you and you either get angry or you cry or whatever, you break down, whatever it is, whatever that expression is for you. So yes, maybe you know you bumped your elbow and it's honestly not big of a deal, but that made you cry <laughs> because you are low on sleep or you're dealing with some big stressor in your life. And equally, if someone just says, you're fine, it's like, yeah, I know I'm fine, but I'm experiencing something right now and I really need to be supported through my emotions. Rather, as parents, I think what we need to do is just see our babies 
as people and possibly even help them put words to their emotions. And this definitely goes for older kids, you know, when they're toddlers and they're, they're understanding language a bit more and they have their own language and we can say to them, oh, it seems like you're really frustrated because of XYZ or oh, it seems like you had a bad day or it seems like you miss your daddy or it looks like you're really sad right now or whatever it is and help them put words to it because they don't know how to put words to their emotion. They're still developing that intelligence. And even for babies who, you know, are one, don't have language yet, or they do have some, but they don't have a lot. Why, why am I even structuring my words? Why am I so careful about what I say to my baby? And this goes for, you know, everything that I'm talking about in this video, not just this one topic. I think so much of parenting is about how we perceive our children, how we perceive our babies, how we perceive, you know, the whole experience of being a parent. And while my baby may not be able to understand exactly what I'm saying, the way we perceive our children is affected directly by the words that we use around them. So if I'm just, you know, like, oh gosh, another diaper to clean, you know, rather than just, you know what, this is my job. I clean diapers, you know, and having a joyful, caring attitude about that. My baby's going to pick up on that because my words affect how I perceive the baby and the baby can read how I feel about them. Another thing I say when I'm supporting my baby through his emotions, like if he hurts himself or whatever, because he's learning to walk right now, so there's lots of bumps, is I like to ask rather than tell. So I'll say, you know, what happened? What's wrong? You know, how are you feeling? And, and just even though he can't understand me, you know, it really does affect our whole interaction and the whole experience of me being able to support him through that rather than trying to control his emotions. and. Honestly, if we're just trying to get our baby to stop crying all the time, it's almost as if we're sending the message that we're only okay and we're only happy and we're only loving as long as they are happy, which, you know, babies aren't gonna be happy all the time. <laughs> the second thing I never say to my baby is telling him he's good or telling him that he's bad. Um, this was such a mind-altering concept for me when I first heard it. I was with a friend of mine um, and her baby, this was years ago, you know, seven years ago, and her baby was sitting there and I just made a comment like, whoa, she's such a good baby because she was just chill, happy, calm, peaceful. And she goes, well, what is a good baby? And I was like, <laughs> like I never thought about it that way. Like there's no such thing as good baby, bad baby. And when you really dig into it, it makes me honestly sort of emotional because like what what have we been doing all these years? Like labeling some babies good and some babies bad. There's happy baby, there's colicky, there's upset, there's rambunctious, there's spirited, there's um, peaceful, there's mellow, determined and uh, opinionated and vocal like there are different words we can use besides good and bad because if one baby is good that means another baby is bad and that is just the wrong message that is not a message i want my baby to ever hear we are all essentially and at the core of who we are good we are all worthy of being loved and i never want anyone my baby or any other per person in this world to think that they aren't valuable um, simply because they exist like they are valuable you are worthy and this is such an important message for me because everything stems from that if my baby can understand from such a young age that he is loved protected supported secure safe simply because he is who he is and he doesn't have to do anything to get my approval then I think I'm doing something right as a parent and that's something that I really strive for that my baby as he grows and even now at this very young age, just feels super secure in that, in knowing how worthy he is. And that's why, you know, Christmas is just around the corner and I hear lots of people talking about like, should we talk about Santa? Should we do Santa? Is Santa's bad? Is it, what should we do without Santa? The only problem I have with Santa is that, you know, we've got a naughty and nice list. We've got the good and the bad children and good children gets presents and bad children get coal. You know, all children are good, okay? And if, some children are going through something, they are the ones struggling. They're not manipulating you. They aren't trying to make your life hell and they aren't trying to be bad. 
there is something deeper going on there for which I would recommend the book Positive Parenting. And the third thing I never say to my baby is more of like a do than a say, is I don't interrupt my baby when he is in the middle of whatever it is he's doing, playing, working, learning, focusing, because there are so many reasons. <laughs> it's kind of like a hack. Um, just in terms of like, you know, having um, a little bit of time to do things around the house, but also it's just good for them. So babies don't need to be entertained all day. Um, I think it's good for babies and children, you know, baby, from a young age into childhood to learn that it's okay to be bored and that out of boredom comes curiosity, play, work, focus. I am so fascinated with this topic, especially because we are planning to homeschool. Side note, my, um, my friend, one of my good friends, she is homeschooling her two kids and what they do is every Monday they have boredom day where they don't schedule anything. And the whole purpose of this is like, kids are so busy these days, they've got this practice and that rehearsal and this activity and this class and they're just cons their schedules are so full that they don't have time to be bored so she purposely doesn't do anything on Mondays and they're just bored in their jammies playing with their Legos all day and from that comes really wonderful play. So even at my baby's age it's really important not to interrupt his focus. The reality is that babies are natural learners. Babies love to learn. Children love to learn. And you're just existing and doing and, you know, working. You're, you're doing chores. You're doing things around the house. And they are watching you all the time. And they're learning just by watching you. And that's why, you know, it's so important to be our best selves and to uh, work on ourselves so that our babies can learn from that. So when my baby is playing by himself and I can tell he's really focused and you know, a few minutes have gone by and I haven't heard a peep, but I just hear her, his blocks, his toys, his books. I know not to interrupt him, interrupt him because he is in the process of the most miraculous, amazing thing. His brain is developing, he's focusing, he is learning so much without me saying a word or engaging at all. And when I interrupt his focus, I'm disengaging him from whatever he's doing and whatever he's understanding and conceptualizing and learning. On top of that, when babies at a young age are given time by themselves to, to, to work and learn and play and play with their blocks and just open, like he'll just like open books and close books and then turn them around and, and go blah, blah, blah and pretend to read because that's what I do is I read to him. And if I just let him do that, he is going to learn so much and he's going to get used to, um, he's gonna develop like a, a focus skill. He's gonna develop a, an attention span and be a lot better at sitting by himself and playing by himself, which is amazing for you because then you get so much time to do the dishes in peace, cook dinner in peace, or whatever it is you're doing around the house. Of course, we need to engage with our babies in the day. Of course, we should play with them. And of course, we should, you know, look them in the eye and talk to our babies. I talk to my baby all day long. We're constantly talking. And sometimes for a good 15 minutes, all we're saying back and forth to each other is like, bah, 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 blah, 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 blah. But once my baby's like locked in, I can see he's like, oh, I'm really into this colony right now I'm gonna put it on my head I'm gonna take it off my head I'm gonna yell into it then I'm gonna turn it around he's engaged he's locked in I step away and let him do his thing because he's developing a muscle and it's so good for them so I had never heard this before it might be total old news to you but when I heard this I was like whoa that's so important we don't just need to like when I'm with my baby, I'm not just sitting there like entertaining him all day like And it's it's actually better for him to play by himself for as much as he can And not every baby has the same muscle or the same strength So some babies need more time to work up to it So I've heard it suggested like just play with your baby for you know a few minutes Just keep your mouth shut and just sort of watch them uh, You know engage when you need to if they're frustrated they need something and then once they get in you know, locked in, you just sort of step into the background and then, then they need you after a few minutes and then you just sort of let them build up their, tolerance isn't the right word, I would say build up their strength, their muscle, their focus muscle. I think there are so many ways that we can be intentional about how we parent and one of the biggest things I try to do is to be respectful of my baby. I know he's just a baby but he's still a person and there are about a thousand other things I could say on that topic but I'll just end that here. And yeah, I hope you guys have a wonderful, wonderful day.